Hi there. Welcome to Conversations with Pastor Rick. I just want to kind of remind you, perhaps maybe you're new, there are a few episodes uh, before this as we're kind of walking and journeying through the book of Ephesians. We're still in chapter one. We're going to take our time. Uh, and my role and purpose and intent is not to be preachy um, and not to uh, throw a bunch of doctrines and a lot of theology, although all of that is a part of what we're doing. That is not the main reason. The main purpose for, uh, for this is that, uh, is that we, can, uh, we can look at this from the perspective of walking this as a journey in life. Um, I am convinced that the Word of God is not to be the book of law on, on, on our memorization and then, then trying to get our flesh to follow through with what we've memorized or even what we've consumed as a consumer. But the Word of God is a living Word. It's a living Word that gives life, that produces fruit, um, but it also expands our, our understanding and capacity with how, how Father sees um, our life here on planet Earth, how he, what, how he sees you and me. And, and, and then he exposes himself, his heart. Man, today I'm going to read a scripture that literally brought, almost brought me to tears. Um, and I've read it, I don't know how many times, but for some reason, uh, as the, the Holy Spirit is moving, uh, even in this, in our church, we're starting, we're seeing just a fresh breath of, of Holy Spirit, uh, uh, breathing on, on us and, uh, even through our worship and through our word and, uh, just the, the growth that's, that is really happening, um, with, with folks that are just, quite simply amazing and astounding it just blows my mind to just see how God works even in the midst of great uh, turmoil if you will like in our world but also in the church that's in the church cr across not only our land uh, and but all over the world um, God is doing something he's shaken and now he's preparing us uh, to be I, I believe to to be ready for his coming but to be, um, but to be at work in his kingdom uh, for the sake of the lost, and and I, and the only I, I grew up in the age where um, I would simply be be told, well, you know, to evangelize, you take these handful of tracks and you go on the street and you you pass them out or you put them in in door jams of houses or or whatever those whatever that was back in the day and that was called evangelism well honestly um that that did work for some but it's not necessarily i believe what is the call the call of this of, of the heart and the will and the the word of god is that we would get the seed which is the word that we would get the word in us beginning with jesus and that that word would begin to, to to that seed would begin to to blow out of the shell and take root in our lives i, I you know i can i can do things out of discipline um, but I believe what God is really looking for is not just in the discipline of myself, but it is the exposure of him. You see, because when we are exposed to him, his very nature, the very, uh, the very person that he is, uh, and not, not a picture on the wall, but one who, who, who through the Holy Spirit is among us, even to this very day, he, um, that, that, that in that, that, that there is, is something that happens that 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 literally allows us to breathe the life of Jesus uh, to our dark culture, our dark world, uh, and expose those who don't know Him uh, to know Him through seeing and experiencing Him in us, and that's pretty interesting because this is part of where uh, I want to. I want to just take a few moments and share with you. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, open up to your Bibles up to Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians chapter one. We're gonna we're gonna hover for a while, a little bit around verse seven, um, and I want to kind of pick apart some things there. And again, we're, the idea is not to make this lengthy, um, um, but it is to encourage us 
uh, to take in the fullness of the Word of God um, and His Spirit uh, and to His glory. So let's let me just read um, uh, I'll read verse six and then seven. Oh well, I'm sorry. In in verse uh, verse seven. Let's just stay stay with verse seven. And here's what it says. Let me get it on my Bible. And it says this. Now we're going to pull it apart, but I'm just going to read the 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 actual text, uh, and then we'll 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 take some time. In Him, we have redemption through His blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Now, there's a lot more, but I want to hang out with that very opening part in verse 7, uh, that word, in him. And that is a reoccurring theme throughout the whole of the New Testament. Um, the whole of the New Testament has everything to do with, with our, our not doing and being on our own, but that we do out of and in and through the in Him. Because in Him is what makes the difference. In Him, it changes the, 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 very, the very dynamic uh, of, of how and what we do as we march along in this journey here on planet Earth. You see, it's in Him that we can accomplish things, but outside of Him we cannot. Outside of Him we depend on the flesh, but in Him we have to totally depend on what He's saying, what He is doing, our staying and continuously walking in the attachment of in Him. In Him, a couple of scriptures that kind of came to my mind about the word uh, that that thing that thing in Him. And uh, the first one is in, found in John chapter 14. And while it seems like it's just an outside scripture that doesn't seem to be associated, but it, but it, it, it does, and it is. It, it literally, uh, I believe, it, it expands on the, uh, that little, little phrase there in him. It says this, And Jesus said to him, to, his, to uh, actually to Stephen, and, um, to the disciple, not Stephen. And it says this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. And then verse 7 says, If you'd known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on you know him and have seen him. Now the reason why I'm pulling that scripture and inserting into our little conversation um, here in Ephesians 1:7 in the in the area of in Him, and that is, is that we need to know who in Him is, and in Him is 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 very much clarified to uh, to Jesus Himself at exposing who He is, and how do we get to through Him to the Father. Amen? And so here's what it says. It says, I am the way. You know, and that's such a simple thing, but why is it that we miss so much in the simple things? We complicate it and we try to explain it and we try to, to, to bring some of our own education to it when it's rather simply stated, it's powerfully uh, moving, but it's simply stated, it says, I am the way the truth, and the life. That is simply making a statement a fact, but it's not just for educational purposes. It is for establishing. Now, I've been in this series um, called The Journey of, 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 of a Spiritual Life, growing, uh, growing in Our Spiritual Lives. Uh, and right now, I'm on that, that little phrase called establish, and that establish means to fix. So we need to, we need to see this as, as a place where we have to fix ourselves on this fact, this truth. That there is no other way. Your denomination, your being Catholic, isn't going to save you. Your being Protestant isn't going to save you. Your being an American isn't going to save you. Your being a church attender or a small group attender isn't what's going to save you. What saves us, what delivers us from the power of Satan and 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 the the living of eternity in hell is through this particular statement that is found here in John chapter 14. That there is only one way. It is in Him 
which is the I am, the way, the truth, and the life. And we can't even get to the Father if we don't if we don't don't understand that we haven't gone through that particular door. And I just want to pause here for a moment. Again, I want to simplify something. Here's the deal. The deal is what separates you from God is sin. And sin is not what you've done or what you're doing or what whatever has happened even in your past, okay? Sin is not so much a, a something that that we identify as, oh look, that person is, is living in sin. We, we, we're really good at throwing judgments. But the bottom line is, is that sin really simply, without getting into really heavy-duty study, and, and maybe one day we will, sin is that in that you and I are, we, to begin with, we are separated from, from the Father. We, cannot, we, we don't have relationship automatically. So doing all those things, even memorizations and, and, and all these things or hanging close to another Christian would make us Christian? Absolutely not. It is when each of us individually on our own, our own, we step into that place of, of, of seeing that there is only one door. There is only one person. And his name is Jesus. And this is the same in him that we're talking about here in Ephesians chapter seven, uh, chapter one, verse seven. And I'm hoping I'm not, I'm not uh, confusing you. I just want you to see that there's so much more to every word in the word. And the implications of that one word is vast and huge. In Him. Now, here's, I'm going to take a moment now, and, and, and this is probably about as far as I'll get today, so I, I, I ask your forgiveness for not being able to track faster. Um, but I want to read a, 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 actually a text, a, a full in context, um, out of John chapter 17. So uh, just take a minute and, and open up your Bible now over to John uh, chapter 17. And I want you to put your finger on verse, oh, beginning with verse 9. And the reason here is, now, see, we've identified the in Him, which is in Him, it is something that is in Him. We, it's established in a person. That person is the one who, who, who gives us the privilege of having a relationship, a divine, personal, intimate relationship with the Father, the Creator, the one who wanted this and wants this so deeply for you and for me. He doesn't want our religion. He doesn't want our practice. He doesn't want our good behaviors or, or working things up. What he wants is he wants a surrendered heart, understanding that it's sin that separate us, and we repent of sin, and then we turn from that thing. We turn from the, from the life that has been of separation back to Jesus, and he is because he is the way, the truth, and life. And then we come into that place of being in him which is a whole new world. It's a whole new world. All right, let me just begin with verse, uh, verse 10. And that's John chapter 17. And we're just going to start with verse 10. And here's, and I'm just going to read right on through. And we well, listen to this, because this, is this for some reason, it hit me really incredibly deep uh, when I was reading over this scripture. And I, I really want to build off of that for um, our, our service uh, during our our church service. Here's what it says. And all oh, this is Jesus speaking, and he's praying, actually. He's not even speaking, but he's praying to the Father. He says, all and all mine are yours, and yours are mine. He's speaking to the Father, this is Jesus. And I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Underline, circle that. He's praying to the Father that we that that they, we may be one as as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. And those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition. That the scripture might be fulfilled. 
But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me in the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Jesus continues to pray. I do not pray for these alone, but listen to this. But I pray for those who believe in me through their word. You see, before that, if he didn't have that in there, it would be just for the disciples, just for the 12 disciples. It would have nothing to do with you and me. But because this scripture is in there, but, uh, but, but, uh, but also for those who believe in me through their word, the word is found in the written word of God, the testimony of the saints, uh, Paul's writings of which are, we're, we, are, we are walking through in our conversations. Um, all of that, if we believe, then we too can and will become one, but it's not in our thought, and it's not in our place of physical agreement. Our, 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 we become one in Him, the person of Jesus Christ. Verse 21 says that they may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us. If you want to know the heart of God, the very heart throb and deep um, passion of Jesus, it's found right here. It's found that we would become one as they are one with them and in him, of course, and through him. That the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, in them, you and in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me. For you love me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, this is Jesus praying still. Um, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have known you sent me. I have declared to them your name and will declare it. That the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. That whole passage is about an exposure of the deep, deep love of Jesus for you and for me. It's to, that we could become one, and you can. Because look, look at that, script, that, that passage again in, in verse 7, and it says this, In Him, and then it goes on, we have. And we'll talk about that next week. But in Him, it's being in Him. Him, <laughs> not in just in the church, though it's very important that you find a good uh, teaching, preaching church that you can be a part of and encouraged that you can give your gifts and they can share their gifts with you. But, but the real deal here is this, is that we are not attached externally, but we are ingrained, in, we are engraved into his very person that we would exploit the love and the power and the passion and the passionate love of Jesus for all people, no matter where they've come, no matter what they've done. That's the beauty of what we'll be talking about perhaps next week. And that is, is that, that this thing has done greater, great things that have literally, that can and will change your life and the world that we live in. Listen, I need to go because of time, but I just want you to know that I love you. I, I appreciate you. I'm so grateful that we've had this time together. And, and may you be blessed and kept. Stay in His Word. Keep seeking His face. And understand 
that you are called to be in him and then in him and through him and then showing the world who he is through you. Lovings, love you and bless you in Jesus' name. God bless. Bye-bye.